I'd like to give you a little help getting started on this worksheet. So let's start by labeling the time for these here. This will be time equals zero. Over here we're going to time equals one second. Time equals two seconds. Three seconds. And four seconds. Because it tells us right here that these are are occurring in one second intervals. So A, what can you conclude about the motion of the object? So hopefully you can answer that on your own from the lab we did today with the motion sensors. Let's scroll down here and draw a quantitative graphical representation of X versus T on the axes below. Okay, so I'm just going to zoom on here so we can see a little better what numbers we're going to need to go up to. So this is position. And that means that we're going to have to uh, look to see what is the initial position. So we can put here x at time 0 equals 1. Because if this is 0 here, this is 1 next to it, and it goes all the way from up to 5 all the way up to 10. Uh, so I'm thinking here, let's count these. We have 1, we have um, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we should go by twos. This can be two, four, six, eight, ten, and twelve. All right, and we can see here that we go all the way up to four seconds. So down here we can put time is zero. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So let's um, begin to plot these points. So it says draw a quantitative graphical representation. So that's why we have the scale to make it quantitative. And it looks like at zero, the position is one. So we have a data point right here. And at one, the position is um, three. So I know that because on the scale, Where's my, here's my, and on the scale, we have 3, 4, 5, etc. Okay, so 3 is going to be right here. Right here. And then uh, at 2 seconds, we're going to be 5. I'll, go, I'll let you go ahead and finish that on your own. So at this point, I'd like you to hit pause. Okay, so hopefully you have the same dots that I have now. And we can see that we can fit a best line to this. And um, I'll do a best fit line. I'll do it in blue here. So I'm going to try to draw a line through these here. I should be using straight edge. That would make it a lot better. Let's see if I can redo that. Okay. And this spot right here, this, um, this by intercept, this is what we would call our initial position, x0. And that 0 should be really written more like a subscript underneath. OK, so there is a quantitative graphical representation of position versus time. If we want to do the same for velocity versus time, we have to ask ourselves, well, what is the velocity? And this is why I would ask you to look at how far is it going for every one second interval. And it's pretty clear to see that it's going from 1 to 3, and then from 3 to 5, 5 to 7, etc. So we know the velocity of this is going to be 2 meters per second. And so let's make a scale. This will be 2, 1, 3, 4, 5. And we're going to have the same scale on the time axis. That's wrong. We're going to have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So what does a quantitative graphical representation mean in this case? So we're going to have a value of 2 meters per second the whole time. So we can draw that going all the way across here. Actually, we don't know it after four seconds. So we need to take this away a little bit. It's only, we only know for sure from zero to four. In fact, that means that this data point up here should not actually be here for position versus time. But we can assume that if it remains constant velocity, that that's where it would end up. Okay, now write a mathematical model equation. This is part D that represents the relationship between x and t shown by your graph. 
include both a specific with values and a general var variables only equation in each case. So I want to remind you that we're looking at lines and that means that that means we're going to have, let's zoom in now. Sorry, I should have probably zoomed in earlier so we can see it a little better. Okay, so that means that we're going to have some equation of the form y equals mx plus b. Because this is the general equation for a line. But I'm going to put it in parentheses because this is the generic math version. But for us, what is on the y-axis? As we can see, it's actually x. And what is on the x-axis? We can see that it's time. And b is the x-intercept, x naught what's right over here and m x m would be our slope but we know that when we're looking at a position versus time graph the slope is velocity so we can call that v right here we have just made what we would call the general variables only equation now, I want you to plug in the numbers that we actually know for this. Um, so in other words, when we have x, so x is still x, but we actually have a value for v. We actually have a value for x naught, and I'd like you to plug those in. So it's a similar process for e, where we're writing a mathematical equation to represent the relationship between velocity and time. And just to get you started on this a little bit, we can see that oh, we can see that we are again going to use the general equation for a line. So it's going to be y equals mx plus b. And in this case our y is our v. And, rem and our x is our t, and the b intercept would be v naught, v at time zero. And what does a slope of a velocity versus time represent? It represents acceleration. So let's put acceleration in there. Okay, now this is again the general, so now we would supply numbers in for the variables that we know. Okay, and that's pretty much what I wanted to just make sure that you're good to go on that part. Okay, and um, we'll go over any questions you have in class.